Hello, so I'm continuing my videos on games I own that I've only played once, and next up is Railways of the World, as you can see. I bought this in 2018, um, kind of wanted to get some, my family kind of likes Ticket to Ride, so I wanted to get something that was a step up from that, so I thought I would try this. I uh, played it myself back in 2018 and actually have never got my family to play it yet. So I hadn't played it again since then until yesterday. So I played it yesterday to refresh myself on the rules to make this video. Um, this version that I have, uh, I think is like the 2008 version or something. I believe there was a Kickstarter for a newer version not long ago. I don't know how long ago, but uh, so... I can't speak to the differences in that one and this one. Uh, this one came with two maps, um, the Railways of the Eastern U.S., which is the one I'm going to be playing on here, and then it also came with a smaller map, Railways of Mexico. So I'll just be going. I'm sure the rules um, are the same, more or less, but uh, I'll just be going over the railways of the eastern US because that's what I played. Alright, let's get uh, started with setup and go from there. Alright, well the rules don't exactly mention it but uh, first thing you need to do is pick which map you're playing on and put that board in the play area. This one, railways of the eastern US, is a pretty big map. Um, so anyway, I've done that. Next thing you'll do is take these good cubes, goods cubes, there's a bunch of them, and put them in this bag, mix them up, and then you'll put, uh, you'll see each city on the map has a number, so you'll put that number of goods cubes in each city, although if you're only playing a two or three player game, uh, you put one less than what it says, but <clears throat> even if it has, just has a one, you always put at least one. So, you know, just to see how that would work, you draw two randomly. Uh, let's just say I was doing Louisville. I'm only going to actually put one. Um, well, since I drew two, we'll do Cincinnati. Since I'm only doing a three-player game instead of three, I put two. So we put both of those in Cincinnati. So I'm gonna, I'll draw that and do that for each city on the map and come back. All right, so I've got cubes in every city. Again, you uh, normally put the number of cubes that it shows on the city. Um, but as you can see, Atlanta shows four, but I only put three because I'm only playing two or three players. If you're playing more than three players, you put, put the number that it shows there. If you're playing less, one you put one less. Anyway, I've got that done. Let's go to the next all right, next you place these new city tiles um, next to the board, separated into four piles. All right, next you'll place the bombed, <coughs> bomb, <laughs> bond tiles or certificates into the three piles of the different values, 1, 5, and 10, somewhere next to the board. Next you place your... Uh, money next to the board separate normally separated into three different piles of denominations 1,000, 5,000, and 10,000 although I'm short on room so I'm going to leave them all in one pile to form my bank and I'll place that here um, under the new city tiles but again normally you would separate them into three different piles and you place your uh, track tiles there's a whole bunch of these um, you place them somewhere on the side of the map I kinda leave mine all in just actually I have two bags there's so many of them so I just leave my track tiles in a bag um, next to the map but uh, the rules say put them in a pile somewhere next to the map so however you want to do it each player chooses a color and takes, takes the uh, control locomotives of that color um, again, for me, I'm playing a three-player game. I'm going to take uh, blue, green, and red. So everybody will get all the trains of their color. Each player will take a level one locomotive card and place that in front of them. And then you'll place an empty city marker. There's uh, these plastic water towers. And there's different uh, markers. Um, you 
for empty cities, which you'll see as we go, but you can take any one of them and place it on the uh, first step of the round track. So that's all that's stated in this uh, basic uh, rules manual for setup. But then depending on the map you're playing, like this one's for the uh, railways of the eastern U.S., then there may be some additional steps, so we'll get to those. So for railways of the eastern U.S., you have these uh, railroad baron cards. You'll shuffle this deck and deal each player two cards. Then the players will look at those cards and they have you know, something that's going to give you uh, bonus points at the end of the game if you achieve it. Like this one, you gain eight points if you have the longest railroad, most consecutive links. Or gain six points if you're a player connected to the most cities at the end of the game. So each player will choose one that uh, that's going to be their baron and that'll be the bonus they'll get if they achieve it and then they keep that face down in their play area hidden from the other players the other one is just discarded with the baron cards that were not used um, back to the box and then here's one of the weird things about these rule books the railways of the eastern u.s railroad operation cards the rules for them are not actually in the rule book for the uh, railways of the eastern U.S. they're actually back in the rules um, for the the basic rules or at least how to set them up so I find that a little bit strange but anyway back to the basic rules it says for these railroad operation cards you first find the cards that have this gold S and lay them out um, and they're available and then you'll deal out um, number of cards two times the number of players so uh, in a three player game that will be six additional cards so let me deal those out so that's the three with the S starting and then I dealt out six additional cards which are available and then that's just the deck at the end of each round you'll deal out one additional card and these cards will be uh, probably taken some of them will be taken uh, during the player actions which we'll go over later um, before doing that you remove these major lines cards it's uh, <clears throat> kinda like uh, routes and <laughs> ticket to ride where if you are the first person to complete one of these major lines then you'll get uh, a number of bonus points which are shown on this card here so like if you get Atlanta to Richmond um, it's worth eight points Baltimore to Toledo six points so those are set aside once somebody <clears throat> completes one of those uh, they take that card and uh, score those points um, immediately in the railways of the eastern US there's uh, two additional tokens the special link tokens which can be used um, to build kind of signify building railways to the west which we'll talk about uh, later when we go over the rules but uh, it doesn't really say anywhere in the rules to set these aside anywhere but I just put them over here by the new city tiles and then there's this income track board which uh, really nowhere in the rules does it say to put that out I think there is a little blurb in the uh, railways of the eastern US rules where it says this board is used to keep track of score doesn't neither of the rule books say anything about what marker you use to keep track of the score so uh, I think uh, most people just use a train that starts up here at zero so I can't really get these to fit on there, but once I get one point, I just move them along and use the front of the train for the marker. But you could use a cube or something else that might be easier. Again, it doesn't say in any of the rules. And there's nothing said in the rules about these cards, but I think you can deal one of these to each player, which shows what the major lines are that you can try to score. And then it also has the actions and the costs to build track and stuff on the back of those. So even though I don't find that stated in the rules, uh, at least in the version I have, you deal one of these to each player. 
And that pretty much covers setup. Uh, first player will be determined um, kind of at the beginning of each round, um, starting in the first round of the game. So we'll get to that when we go over the rules. But otherwise, I think we're set up and ready to go over how to play. All right, well, the first thing you'll do at the beginning of a round is to uh, have an auction for the first player, where you'll the players will bid... Um, Normally, starting with the person that was first player the previous round, um, in the first round of the game, it's the youngest player that gets to make the first bid for first player. And you'll notice when we set up, nobody started with any money. So um, in this game, nobody starts with money. So when you want to make a bid or pay for something initially before you have money, you have to uh, take a bond certificate. So um, you take one um, according to how much you need. You can't take more than what's required to pay for whatever you're uh, buying or bidding on. So um, in the first round of the game, uh, the youngest player, uh, again, would bid, say, you know, had the minimum starting bid is 1000 So he may bid 1000 The other players can then bid a higher amount in denominations of 1,000, or they can pass. Uh, if if they pass, then they're not allowed to bid anymore. And the bidding continues until everybody has passed but one person, and then the highest bidder has to uh, pay for what they bid. And at the beginning of the game, that would require somebody to take a bond certificate. Um, they come in uh, 5,000, so if you... You know, you say you bid two thousand dollar, ended up being the high bidder at two thousand dollars to be first player this round. You would take a bond certificate, and you'd get five thousand dollars, two thousand of which you'd have to pay back to the bank, and then you'd keep the other three thousand, and you have to keep your bond certificate. Now you can never sell your bond certificate back to the bank or pay it off. You always have it throughout the game and every round you got to pay a thousand dollars for every um, bond certificate you have if you end up having a five uh, uh, one that has a five that's twenty five thousand dollars or one that has a ten then of course you'd have to pay every round five thousand for that one and every round ten thousand for that one plus at the end of the game for every bond you have you subtract one uh, victory point So after the auction um, and you've paid, you get your first player, the take the first player card and then you'll be the first player for that round. Um, I say round, but I guess it's actually called um, a turn um, instead of a round. And then there's rounds of player actions, but the full um, auction, rounds of player action, and income and dividend phase, I think that's all called one turn. So. Anyway, after the uh, bid for first player auction, then you move on to the uh, player actions phase. The player actions will be played in three rounds, so in each round each player can take one action, starting with the first player, then you go to the second round, then each player starting with the first player takes one action, and finally you go to the third round, um, starting with the first player, each player takes one action, and then at the end of um, the third round, you go to the income and dividend phase, and after the end of that, then you start over with the um, auction phase for first player, if you haven't reached the end of the game, which we'll talk about that in a bit, but let's start about what are the player actions that you can do each round. Well, one of the main actions you can do is build a uh, track and when you do that you're going to place track tiles on these um, hexagonal is that the right word hexagonal squares um, you can place at most four tiles during an action um, and each tile costs a certain amount if you're going across uh, open terrain like these great regular green spaces here cost two thousand dollars for each tile you place if your tile is going to cross water of any type either river or maybe down here 
uh, in this space that's got a little bit of ocean on it. If, you're, if the hexagon that you're putting a tile in has water in it, um, then it's going to cost you $3,000 to place that tile. If you're placing one in one of these mountain spaces that has a dot, that costs $4,000. And if you are crossing over, if your track's going to cross over one of these black ridge lines, that costs an additional $4,000. So if you placed one here, that would be $4,000. And then you placed another one here, that would be 4000 plus an additional 4000 to cross this ridge. So it can be pretty expensive going over mountains. So um, when, you're, when you're building track, the first tile you place must either meet up with a city or it has to uh, continue a previously placed uh, incomplete link. A, a track between two cities is called a link. So in this case like if a player was building I didn't really grab any good on his action he decided to place four as I said that's the most you can place. You can place fewer if you can only pay for fewer but even if you can pay for more than four you can't place more than four unless some there's some of these railroad operation cards that let you place more but standard is up to four so um, on his next action he could uh, continue this link to try to connect to this city or um, he could start building from another city but you can't um, just start in the middle of nowhere and start building a track also if you have an incomplete link at the end of the third round of actions, if you didn't end up connecting that link to a city, then um, that link would be removed. And whenever you're building track and you've started a link, um, you'll place a uh, control marker or one of your control locomotives on that link. So you always know um, nobody else can build off of um, or add on to your link and so like and then once it's complete you leave that uh, marker on there to know that that is your link so that's one action you can do build track another action you can do is called urbanize so you'll notice that some of these cities are gray um, some are blue red yellow purple, black, but some of them are gray. So if you urbanize for $10,000, you can choose one of these new city markers. Um, your choice of colors you know, is yours as long as it's available. And you can urbanize one of these gray cities by putting a new city marker on it. And then you can draw two, then you draw two additional cubes out of the bag and place them on that city. If that city had an empty city marker on it, um, because anytime you've moved, we haven't talked about delivering goods yet, that's coming up, but anytime you've taken all the cubes out of a city, you placed an empty city marker on it, which I said, you know, are these, or they're, they're all different shapes, which I'll show um, in a little bit, but you place one of those on an empty city. Well, if you urbanize an empty city, then you remove the empty city marker you know, place your new city and then, um, as I said, draw two additional cubes out of the bag and place them on that city. All right, another action you can do is the deliver one goods cube. So, when you deliver a goods cube, um, yeah, let me, to give an example, let me, let me move this yellow cube and pretend it was here and I'll put this blue one up here all right so we'll pretend it was that this is the situation when you deliver a goods cube you move it from one city to the city of the color of the cube so because I have if this was red players turn and he has this link here between 
uh, here where there's a yellow cube in this yellow city, he could deliver this yellow cube to the yellow city. When you do that, it just goes back in the bag, but then you get, um, you move up on the victory point track, one point for every link that you went across of your, um, that you control, um, you go up one on the uh, victory point track. So in this case, if he did a deliver cube, de delivered this, he went across one of his, one link, he would get to move his train to the first, uh, up one from zero to the first point on the victory, t victory track. Now, uh, let's say this yellow cube was over here, and he's got uh, two links here. If he delivered it one, two links, then he would get two points. So he would go, you know, from zero to one, two. So the number of links you deliver a cube across is the number of points you go up on the uh, income track. And the cube that you deliver just goes back into the bag of cubes. And for an action, you can only deliver one cube. So each one of your um, actions, each round, you could only deliver one cube. So that's one action. And that brings us to another action you can do is the upgrade engine. So remember, we started with level one engine. So with a level one engine, you can only deliver up to one link. So if a player had a level one engine, he could not deliver this yellow cube across two links because each level of engine is the number of links you can deliver a good across. So in order for the red player to be able to deliver this yellow cube all the way to here, he would have to have a level two engine. So to upgrade your engine, to go to level two, um, you'd have to pay $5,000 and then you can upgrade to a level two and you can deliver up to two links away. Um, there's, you can upgrade your engine up to level eight, but of course the costs start increasing. Like to go up to a level three engine, you can see cost $10,000. But then you're able to deliver a good up to three lengths away and of course then you get to move up three spaces on the income track. So you can go up to a level eight engine. And another action you can take is to obtain a uh, railroad operations card which remember we dealt out a certain amount at the beginning of the game. Now the ones with these green icons those can't be selected for an action. They just have um, an effect that if somebody completes that effect, they take the car and get the bonus. Um, so like this one, the first player to make a three-link delivery gains three additional points on the income track. And then this card would just go into the discard pile. It would be removed and put in the discard pile. So the, the cards with these green icons, they can't be selected for an action. They just have um, something that players can try to achieve and then if they do that on their turn um, they get that bonus and then the card once that card has been achieved it goes out of the game now if a player selects a card with the red X he does its effect immediately and then the card is discarded so for instance this one immediate place a, a free new city tile remember I said you um, you can urbanize for an action and it costs ten thousand dollars if you select this card you get to place a free new city tile in a gray city of your choice and then add two random cubes to it then that card would be immediately discarded some of these railroad operations cards that you can select um, for an action have this icon on it which means you take it and keep it in your hand um, in your play area and then you can play it at any time. Once you decide to play it, then it gets discarded. But um, like these ones, you have to play immediately as soon as you take it. These with this symbol, you can play at any time. If the card has no symbol, like this hotel, you take it if you select it for your action of um, obtain a railroad operations card. Then it just goes in your play area and it's always in effect. So for instance, this one, uh, you get, gain one point on the income track for each good delivered to New York. 
regardless of who delivered it. So if any player delivers a good to New York and you've got this card in your play area, you get to go up one space on the uh, income track. There's one other symbol that wasn't dealt out on our initial, our initial um, starting uh, operations cards there, but there's these that have this purple diamond. Now these you keep in your play area, but you can only use them once per turn. So not, not per round of actions, but remember I said a whole a turn is all three rounds um, of action. So you can only use this once per turn, not once per round of action. So um, for instance, this one's. remember I said there's some that lets you spend, build more than five, four track tiles. This one lets you lay up to five um, segments in a single link. So you can use that once per turn. And again, that's not once per uh, action round. That's once per turn, which is the whole which is kind of like what normally is a round, and these are turns. This is kind of opposite in this game. So those are the standard base game uh, actions you can take. Build track, urbanize, upgrade your engine, deliver one goods cube, or select a railroad operations card. But in railroads of the eastern U.S., there's one other action you can take. So the other action you can take once a player has a link to either Kansas City like this or to Des Moines then they can take the build western link action on their turn. So if you take that ac action you take one of these special link tokens I talked about earlier and put it here in the western link space again that's either next to Kansas City or Des Moines and then you place your control marker on that and that represents you have a railroad going west of the map here you'll then get to draw four red cubes out of the bag and place it on the city either Kansas City or Des Moines depending on which city you have the link um, going to but this action cost thirty thousand dollars to perform it so I guess that you know to symbolize building a lot of track out west. And then, um, if you have a, a link from one of those cities to Chicago, for every one of those red cubes you deliver um, from either Kansas City or Des Moines to Chicago, you add two random cubes into Chicago. So that's the one additional action that's available um, in the railroads of the western U.S. Um, map. So that's all the actions. Um, let's see. So again, each player take one action during round one, one action during round two, one action during round three. At the end of that, you then go to the income and dividend phase. So say at the end of... Um, the third round, this is where the players' uh, markers were on the income track. So you see the blue player would get to collect $11,000 um, from the bank, but then he would have to pay for every um, bond he had. Um, he would have to pay 1000 back to the bank. And red player would get uh, $8,000 and the green player would get seven thousand dollars so the higher up you get on the income track the more money you get every round but again for every um, bond that you have you have to pay back a thousand so if you have a five bond thing you have to pay back five so if you had a five and a one you'd have to pay six thousand back to the bank after you collect your income and i guess that's uh, paying back dividends and I wanted to mention, you know, as I mentioned earlier, when you're playing, any time a city becomes empty, you place one of these empty city markers. Uh, it doesn't matter which one. The same with when you're setting one here to be your round marker. It can be any one of these uh, empty city markers. This one I'm a little confused. I don't know if it's supposed to sit like this or if it's supposed to sit like this and these are chimneys. I'm not sure. But anyway, every time you empty a city of cubes, um, by delivering them, then you place an empty city marker. 
So the game ends after a number of empty city markers are on the map, and it depends on the number of players and which uh, map you're playing with. So on the railroads of the eastern U.S., in a three-player game, after there's 12, after a round where there's 12, um, or a turn, after a turn where there's 12 empty city markers on the map, you'll play one more round, and then you'll uh, score. So when you go to score, um, you're looking at the victory points, which is the number here. So like seven, green at 74, red at 71, and blues at 66. But when you go to score, for each um, bond certificate you have, you've got to reduce your, your sc score by one victory point. So if you have a five bond certificate, you'd go back five points um, on the victory point track. So each player does that. Of course, if you got any bonus from your red, because you completed what your railroad baron um, goal was, then you'll gain victory points for that. And then who is ever higher on the victory point track is the winner. If there's a tie in that, then it's the player with the most uh, links on the track links on the map is the winner. And if there's a tie in that, then it goes to the player with the most money. Um, between the tied players, obviously. And that's it. Uh, not really a whole lot to it. Um, so why don't we go through you know, a couple of example turns, and uh, then we'll wrap it up, and I'll give you some thoughts on it. All right, so we start. It's the first round of the game. The youngest player begins the bidding. We'll just say the youngest player is this guy over here. Um, this is blue, green, and red. There's his. Um, so we'll say blue. He said he's going to be bid 1,000 to be first player. Um, red says he'll pass, and green says he'll pass. So, all right, so blue gets to be the first player for 1,000. He has no money, so he's got to take a bond. So he takes a $5,000 bond, puts it in his play area. And he gets five thousand cash, but then he's got to pay a thousand because that's what he bid uh, to be first player. Put that under my pile of cash there. So that leaves him with four thousand, and then he gets the first player card, and he's first player. Now remember, these railroad baron cards are supposed to be face down, but since I'm playing single player, it doesn't really matter. All right, Blue's first player. It's the first round of the player actions. So Blue gets to take an action. Remember, he can build track, urbanize, upgrade his engine, um, play a delivery. Well, there's no way he could deliver a good because there's no tracks yet. So he could uh, select a railroad operations card, but uh, we'll just say he's going to uh, build some track. So he's going to look around, maybe where's a place he can build a short track and deliver goods. Well, there's red cubes here in Philadelphia that could be delivered to New York, and it's only going to cost one. Now, this there is a smidge of water in here, so that's a $3,000 tile. So he's going to build track there, and it's going to cost him $3,000. So he's going to pay his $3,000 to the bank. He's going to build track there between, uh, where did I say, between Philadelphia and New York. And then he's got to put a control locomotive on there to show that he owns that link. And that's going to be his turn, or his action. So Red's turn now. So he's going to look uh, what he can do. Well, he sees... You know, in Atlanta, there's two purple cubes that he could deliver to Savannah, and then one blue he could, one blue cube he could deliver to Atlanta. So maybe he wants to build a track right here. Those are all two thousand dollar spaces, so he's going to need eight thousand dollars. So that's going to remember he's got no money, so he's got to take two bonds. Um, he can only take bonds up to what it costs to pay, so it's going to cost him two. Uh, 
bond ones and that'll give him ten thousand dollars so he's got to take two of those he'll get ten thousand dollars for that um, but he's going to have to pay two, four, six, eight to build this. So he's just going to take two thousand from the bank and then put his tracks. So here's his two thousand change. He's laid his track, and now he's going to put a control locomotive on there. And now it's going to be the next player's turn. So we go to green. Well, we'll say Green wants to do a build track action also, and he notices there's two black cubes in New Orleans, which he can deliver to Mobile, Alabama. So he's going to start to build some track here. Now, it's going to take one, two, three, four, five to get there. He can only uh, build four. This first one's going to be three thousand, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he's going to have to get two bonds to spend nine thousand uh, to lay four pieces of track. So he got his two bonds at five thousand apiece that gave him ten thousand dollars and he spent nine thousand laying track so he's got a thousand back. <clears throat> Here's his track. Remember this first one covered water so that cost three thousand then the other two were only two thousand apiece so that's a total of nine thousand and he's going to put his control marker on there. Now, he has not uh, completed his link yet to Mobile, so on his next uh, round, he'll do that. If he, if he never did complete this at the end of the third round, all that money he spent there would be wasted because it would just get, get discarded. But for now, that's uh, remember, he can only put up to four, so he couldn't complete it, and that's going to be the end of his turn. All players have completed their turns the first uh, round, so now we go to round two, and it's blue player's turn. All right, well, it's the blue player's turn, and he's going to deliver a red's good cube to New York. So that takes that cube, just puts it in the bag. That went across one link, so he's going to get one point. So we'll move his uh, front of his train to the one point, and then... Uh, there's a railroad operations card. Remember I said anytime these occur, then they just automatically have them. The first player to deliver a goods cube gains one additional point. Well, he's the first player to deliver a goods cube, so he actually gains another point. So he goes up another one on the track. And then this card just gets discarded. All right, well, now we're at the red player's turn, and he's going to do the same thing. He's going to deliver a purple goods cube across this link to Savannah from Atlanta to Savannah because it's purple he can deliver a purple goods cube takes it puts it in the bag and he gets to move up one on the uh, income track so he is on the first space there and I just have green kinda off there with zero points Alright, now we're back to Green's turn. Now, he could finish building his track, but he knows from what he sees here that a blue player on his turn is probably going to deliver another good to New York. Well, instead of building track, he can do the action to uh, get a... Uh, <laughs> what am I say? To select a railroad operations card, so he's going to select this one. And anytime... Uh, a good is delivered to New York he gets one point so that just goes in his play area it's in if always in effect so that's his action so that's all three players actions for the second round so now we go to the third round and it's the blue players turn he is going to deliver a good this red good to New York again that goes across one link so he goes up one space so now he's going to be up here on the three points but now, because a good was delivered to New York and Green has that hotel card, he gets actually gets a point. So now he's on the scoreboard two there next to Red with one point. All right, it's Red's turn. He has still has a purple cube he can deliver to purple to Savannah, so he's going to do that. And that's going to give him a point. So he'll move up here 
to two points. Green's still back there with one point. All right, now we come to Green's turn. Now it's the last turn of the round, so if he doesn't complete this track, he's just going to lose all that money he spent there. So he's got to build track for his last action here. He needs one more um, piece there. It's a on a regular space, so he only on open terrain, so it's only going to cost him two thousand. But he only has a thousand, so unfortunately, he's got to take another five thousand dollar bond. So he took his third bond, got five thousand. He's got to pay two thousand to uh, build that track. So he's got three thousand in change. That leaves him with four thousand. And then he'll place his train there. Now he has a good link between New Orleans and Mo Mobile. All right, well, that's the last player for the third round. So that's the end of the player action round. So we'll go ahead and reset that to one. And now we go to the income and dividend phase. So we'll start with blue. He's right here. So he gets uh, $5,000. But he has one bond. So that costs him 1000 So he's going to get $4,000. So there's that. All right, now we move on to the red player. He is, and it's kind of hard to see, he's only going to get uh, $4,000. But he has two bonds, so that costs him $2,000, so he's only going to get $2,000. So there's the $2,000 he collects, goes with the rest of his cash. And green on the first a spot there he's going to get three thousand dollars but he has three bonds which is going to cost him three thousand dollars so he's actually going to get no money he still has a little bit left over from that last bond he got and that's going to end the round so we would then start over um, with a new auctioning auction for first player and blue since he was first player last time would get to make the first bid um, all the players actually have a little cash this time. And um, so again, then the game would continue. Players would continue to build uh, links or deliver like green on his turn. He would be able to start delivering these black cubes to Mobile. And actually, oh, we forgot one thing. At the end of the round, um, you turn over one new railroad operations card. So we forgot to do that. But there is a card here. The first player to deliver a goods cube to Mobile gains four additional points. So that'll help Green out pretty good because he's going to get to deliver a cube there uh, on his turn, probably on his first action. So that's how the game goes. And then, you know, as um, some of these links get built out, then you have to upgrade your engine because if you wanted to deliver, you know, if, if he finally built some tracks between Mobile to Jacksonville, well, um, that would be two links, so he would have to upgrade his engine to at least a level two to be able to do that. I mean, again, uh, like uh, like I mentioned, well, I put in text in the video earlier, like if Red built a link here between Mobile and Tallahassee, and Blue built a link here between Tallahassee and Jacksonville, um, Red could deliver the yellow cube to Jacksonville because that first link would be his, but since the second link is Blue's, Blue would actually get the point for that. But if you, if all three of these, like if Green built a link here and here, and he had a yellow cube here, and he had a level three engine, well then he'd get one, two, three points for delivering a good to Jacksonville. So anyway, I think that shows you how the game works. Um, it's it's a uh, fun. I I like it. I need to get my family to play it to see if they enjoy. It. I think it might be a little long for them. Like I said, I, my wife and daughter they kind of like Ticket to Ride, but that takes you know about an hour to play. I think this this takes a little bit longer than that. Um, but I'm gonna get them to play it. Maybe this next weekend. Um, I do have some issues with the rule book as I mentioned uh, earlier in the video there's just some 
things left out, which I don't understand. And I, I really don't think there needs to be a separate rule book for uh, the, the East railways of the Eastern U S from the, you know, from the basic rule book, all the rules could have been in there and it should, could have just said, if you're playing with the railways of the Eastern U uh, S use this stuff. Now, again, I said, there's a separate rule book for the Mexico. I haven't even looked at that, but I'm sure all the rules are for the most part the same. So, uh, I don't think there should be separate rule books. It should all just be included in one rule book. But what do I know? Um, if there, I think there are other maps. I don't know other expansions. I haven't seen them. I haven't played them. <laughs> this is all I've played. I do wish they would um, have some different kind of scoring markers because uh, those little trains don't really fit on there good. And there's no. Uh, there's a blue cube and a red cube, but there's not a green cube because there's no green cities, so I couldn't use cubes. So I wish they did have something different for that. But uh, anyway, I think it's a fun game. It's not too much more difficult than Ticket to Ride, so I think it's a good family game. And it, it would I think it'd just be um, fun playing with the game group. So anyway, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.